Neighborhood mutual aid networks started popping up all across the city at the start of the pandemic. At first, they were delivering meals, groceries, medication, and essentials to the elderly and others that were just too vulnerable to go outside. But these grassroots organizations have evolved as the nature of the pandemic has changed. In Brooklyn, the Clinton Hill Fort Greene Mutual Aid Network started organizing pop up vaccination events to help get shots into the arms of people in underserved communities. Their mission continues looking to the future and how they can keep doing this great help. Joining me this morning are two members of the Clinton Hill Fort Greene Mutual Aid Network who play a huge part in these vaccine pop ups. Ani Simone. Ani Simon and Kennedy and Chelsea Frasini. Ladies, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. We're so excited to be here. Absolutely. I know we have chock full of information. So, Ani, I want to start with you. What prompted the idea of these pop up vaccination events uh, in these communities, and how are local mom and pop pharmacies playing a big part in that? So, I became a member of the of our local mutual aid uh, right when the pandemic hit and the mutual aid came forward um, to help with all sorts of different issues, specifically groceries, like you were saying. And, you know, now we just had our one year anniversary and increasingly when people were putting in requests for groceries, they were also asking, you know, can you help me book my appointment for my COVID shot? Mm -hmm. And then my parents who were in their 70s became eligible and I spent days trying to book them an appointment. And, you know, they have laptops, they have, mm -hmm. you know, means of transportation, they have time. And still it took days because it was just impossible. And I thought, you know, if they're having such a hard time, you know, the neighbors that were delivering groceries to forget it. You know, if, if we don't really step up, um, they may never get their shot at all. And so that's really where the the idea first started. And now it's been a little bit over a month and we're still going strong. Still going strong. I love it. Chelsea, um, we understand your specialty is dealing with all the data that's compiled through the hotline and phone banks. So tell us what you do and how does that help get the shots and other aid in into these uh, communities? Yeah, of course. Um, I've been Super excited to be a part of this work. I too, like Ani, joined um, the larger mutual aid network, um, I guess about a year ago now. Um, and in doing the vaccine work, we first started by organizing lists of neighbors that we had been serving through grocery deliveries, wellness calls, other mutual aid work. Um, and in reaching out to them, we actually made thousands of calls, um, which meant that we had a ton of data to organize um, to these households want to take some more time to think about things? Did they want a call back um, to receive more information about the vaccines? Did they want a call back to help schedule? Um, or in some cases, did they want to actually refer a friend or a family member to us and getting a call back? Um, since then, we've expanded our network through building out a hotline um, that folks can call. We've also partnered with other um, groups in New York City that are doing similar work. We've started flyering, um, sharing our hotline information in senior housing around the neighborhood. And we've also been more visible in running these pop-up events where neighbors see us out on the street, um, outside, they ask questions, what's going on? Um, and in doing so, we've built our list of contacts to now be a bit over 1,600 households wow. um, that we continue to track the calls, finding out more if the households have a primary language so that we can match them accordingly with a volunteer who can reach out in their primary language um, and provide the best support that they can um, to make sure that our neighbors are finding out the information yeah. that they want and getting the help they need. This, you guys are like local celebrities. Ani, you're no stranger to PIX11. We spoke to you last year because you're a filmmaker dealing with COVID um, affecting the release of your film. So the lockdown forced so many people to pivot, use their skills in different ways. How did you use your work experience when it came to organizing these pop-ups? Yeah, so yeah, I'm I'm a filmmaker by trade. I am not uh, a medical professional by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. But these pop-up events uh, are guerrilla film shoots in so many ways. Like the skill set is completely transferable, and you know, the seniors are the talent. You know, we have a call time. We need catering. We need to location right. scout. There's we so much need I, transportation. I can imagine that goes into it that we don't think about. And it really, it feels like, you know, a shoot and, yeah. you know, gathering the, the crew together and it's our, our, you know, our volunteers and 
Um, and we're just so nimble and flexible. And so, you know, we've been able to, you know, we've hosted pop-ups in a community gym, in a yoga studio, in a pharmacy. And, uh, you know, we, we can really sort of, you know, and any open space we can transform into <laughs> a vaccine pop-up. And so it's actually been incredibly empowering to see, you know, all of us were, were just neighbors and at the same time, what we've been able to build and how we've been able to help each other out is, um, yeah, just has really been it's, it's, it's something that's kept us going. I bet, I, and I'm sure that everyone there really appreciates it. And it, uh, either one of you can answer this. So as more people get vaccinated and more things continue to open up, how will the mutual aid networks evolve? What will they continue to do? How will they continue to help uh, the communities that need it? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the first thing that we have been thinking about in terms of our evolution is wanting to package up a lot of these toolkits that we've created to share with other neighborhood groups that are doing the same thing or hoping to do the same thing. So we want to do a bunch of resource sharing. And ultimately, you know, we're all out of business soon because hopefully the government um, will provide more accessible options mm -hmm. for all people who want the vaccine to get it. Um, but even beyond that, I mean, mutually, it is centuries old. It is, we're part of a huge legacy yeah. of, of work, especially in communities that, um, you know, have been failed by systems of power. So I think there'll be lots to organize around and we have this vast network of caring and committed neighbors now um, to sustain community with even beyond the pandemic. And we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Ani and Chelsea. And if you wanna know how you can help out with the Clinton Hill Fort Greene Mutual Aid Network or find a mutual aid network in your neighborhood, visit the website listed right there on the screen. Thank you girls so much. Thank you.